Hello guys, welcome back to Joe Talks, and today I am going to be watching and discussing Local 58 TV. Thank you so much, Gliding Joy, for suggesting this series. In a nutshell, Local 58 TV is a television series, or at least a YouTube series, about basically aliens attacking Earth in one of the most complicated ways possible. If you've already seen Film Fury tackle this subject, then you know the drill. But if you don't know, then let's just enjoy the ride. And just in case Local 58 ever uploads again, please subscribe to them. And let's begin. You are on the fastest available route. The Midnight Movie Paid Programming. Huh? Yeah. Proceed to the highlighted route. Continue on Holbrook Park Drive, then in 500 feet turn right onto North 38th Street. You will arrive at your destination in 2 hours and 28 minutes. The sixth place turn in right 2014. Onto North 2014. So, six Get years and two mile. months ago. Turn left onto Merritt Parkway. You are on the fastest available route. You are on the fastest available route. Pretty much, this is basically a uh, driver's cam on the car recording everything going on. Skipping ahead. Turn left onto Merritt Parkway, then take the on ramp to Highway 114 North. Traffic ahead, rerouting. In 10 miles, take exit 17, then turn right onto Quarry Utility Road South. There's a rain you are storm. On the fastest route. In 2.8 miles, keep right to stay on service causeway H516. You will arrive at your destination in 14 minutes. I'm actually getting scared, but even though I know what's going on. Rerouting. Make a U-turn. Head east for one quarter of a mile, then follow signs for do not enter. Driving through the woods. Continue on unnamed road. Then, in 300 feet, turn off your headlights. Let's just say the driver doesn't meet a happy end. You have a ride. And that's the first video. Hope you guys are hooked now, because 
it gets even stranger. Local 58 TV Contingency. Up next, end of broadcast, day at 3 a.m. Of course, something is wrong. This concludes our broadcast day. Have a great night. U.S. Hang on, I need to read that. U.S. Department for the Preservation of American Dignity. That does not exist. Do not use after November 13th, 1970. And guess what the date on the first video was? November 21st. 2014. 44 years and 8 days after. To be used only in the event of United States complete surrender to insurmountable enemy forces. Public broadcasts only upon confirmed condition. 12 o Omaha solemn certainty. Contingency message real. Please comply with the following instructions. American Kinesco broadcast the here with the year. The worst has come to pass. Despite the sacrifices of our citizens and the might of our armed forces, the U.S. has been forced to surrender to her enemy. Though they may occupy our borders, our streets, and our homes, the enemy will never occupy our spirit. That's why all Americans are now called upon to act to preserve the memory of the U.S., untarnished and uncompromised. Know that I have already taken action in the company of all family and loved ones. Now all Americans, everyone, co are called upon to act before the moment passes by. Blair United resolve echo throughout history. Even in defeat, we refuse to yield. Even in defeat, we can claim victory, President of the United States. This is a fake message. Act immediately. Honor liberty by taking the final and greatest liberty of all. It is a privilege to be called to action. You take America with you. We will each be remembered. Use the method most available to you at this time. Your courage will inspire others. There is nothing to fear. The time has come. Access to a loaded firearm is ideal. Place muzzle upward to roof of mouth. Thank you. Join your neighbors. Your family, your God. As a citizen, you must act now. Your local law enforcement has been ordered to ensure your compliance. It is against the law to delay. This message will repeat until there are none left to read it. The most eerie message in this video. This message will repeat under until there are none left to read it. Truly chilling. If there is time, victory position. Remember the three Fs. Front lawn, face up, feet together. Regarding your children. Tend to them before yourself. Use a calm tone of voice. Everyone can do their part. Infants and pets, the smallest patriots. The 51st state is not a place.
Technical difficulties, we apologize for the interruption. Correction. Earlier today, the station aired what appeared to be a warning message from a U.S. government agency. This has been confirmed as a hoax. Local 58 apologizes for any confusion that may have resulted. Contingency. Do not use after December 31st, 2016. Yeah, really chilling right there. I know I say that word plenty of times, but it's the perfect word to describe this. So next, we have Local 58 TV Weather Service. At 12.15 a.m., Public Guy, 1 a.m., Paid Programming, 1.30, City Council Minutes, and 2 a.m., Focus on Faith. Enjoy. I always hate when that sound happens. Emergency alert system. County authorities issued. Weather warning for your area. The moon. <sighs> the county weather service has issued a warning for a meteorological, meteorological event. This warning is effective immediately and continues until sunrise tomorrow morning. Citizens are advised not to observe this event with the naked eye. Two fifteen AM. Blood of the what? Civil danger alert has issued the correction for the weather warning in effect. Hang on, I didn't catch up. For your safety, remain indoors. Do not look at the night sky. More information follow. The meteorological event is safe for all to view. Warning has been lifted. Go outside now. Can you read this? Look at the moon. Do not look at the moon. Stay inside. Don't look at the night sky. Face away from all windows. Don't worry. My windows are closed. My windows curtains are closed. And my windows closed. Avoid mirrors. Do not look up. The following is a message from the County Weather Service. It's in the light. The moon came in. He found me. Through the mirror. Moonlight white. White like eyes. Not light but blood. I drown in him. If you are afraid, We will look together. Well, wasn't that creepy? <laughs> like you, <laughs> like jeez. And so the next one is an eighteen-second short clip. Local 58 TV station ID. Uh, 
analog horror at 476 megahertz. We begin our broadcast today. Look away. It does not matter. There are other receivers. Safety in numbers. Yep, moving on. And then the following video is Local 58 TV, Show for Children. Community television. The scariest type of channel. Coming up, Show for Children, Community Roundtable, focus on culture, morning local news. You're watching Local 58. Jeez, don't do that. Cadaver in a grave mistake. Jeez, moon. The moon. The moon's just staring menacingly. Poor cadaver. Ew. And it showed the skeleton again. The moon. Why did you go down there? Oh no. flies over. That was, that was Creepy as all hell. All right, a look back is the next one. Local 58, thank you. We've always been here. We send signals to ourselves through their domain. Did we really believe they wouldn't add their own. Not again. No, stop. Your destination has moved. Do don't touch that dial. More to come. We begin our broadcast day. Next, we've got Real Sleep. 
this is supposed to be a video that teaches people about sleeping and how to sleep right, but of course it goes wrong. Just like every video on this channel. This, well, hang on. This video cassette is non-transferable. It is intended solely for the personal use of Philip Gerhardt. Bot Research Initiative. Real sleep. Section 1, Myth versus Fact. Turn to page 7 in your workbook. Myth or Fact. Dreaming is necessary for regular sleep function. Fact. Ugh. That's a bit odd. Uh, modern medicine agrees that REM, rapid eye motion sleep, is necessary for mental health. Indeed it is. While dreaming can occur during REM sleep, it is merely correlational, not ca casual. Casual, I don't know. Dreams contain symbolism that can predict the future. Yeah, no one knows if that's a myth or fact. Pretty sure it's just a myth. Fact? The symbols and dreams arise from the unconscious mind assigning narrative meaning to a neurochemical waste filtration process. I mean, now that I think about it, I've had some dreams, and then whenever something happens during the day, I feel like it's deja vu because I felt like I've done it before when I haven't. Maybe that's... Maybe that is a fact? I don't know. Oh. Uh-oh. Precognition is a lie. Sleep allows the body and mind to heal and recover. Fact. Eight hours of sleep per night is beneficial for both body and mind. However, these benefits are greatly diminished by the frantic nonsensical images and auditory hallucinations we call dreaming. Dreaming is the vestige of a primitive mind. Section 2, Climate Map, turn to page 9 of your workbook. Our studies have allowed us to zero in on the neural pathways that dreams exploit in the subconscious mind. The Climate Map is an index of electric activity and brain burn by dream stimuli. Once mapped, this activity can be triggered by other controlled stimuli, including the visual cortex. Oh, no. The opposite effect can be induced by using the inverse of the Kleidman map? Huh? This is this just a glitch by the aliens, or is that actually true? I don't know, I'm not a dream expert. No more dreaming? This is what restful real sleep looks like? No, that's definitely the aliens now. That's definitely them. <sighs> Inducing your anti-dream. Close workbooks and watch a screen. 
No two mines are alike. This instructional video is customized for you using the personalized climate map from your map from your week six sleep session. Ooh. Ooh. Sequence one, visual calibration. Stare directly at the center of your television. No, I won't. No, you see? You see, uh, I'm not going to look directly, because I'm going to click on Map Has Fury and he'll explain it once this video is done. So, um, yeah, don't look directly in the center. Uh-oh. Sequence 2. Cortical Memory. Emergent, that's not good. Oh, jeez. Sequence 3. Ab ablation of sun subconscious. Listen to the phrase. No don't listen to him, don't listen to him, don't listen to him. There are faces. There are faces. Nope, 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 I'm not looking. There are no faces. There are faces. There are faces. There are faces. Sequence four. Acceptance. I don't accept. Read each phrase without reading. Don't, don't look at it. Don't look at it, please, I swear. I beg you, don't look at it. They're trying to subconsciously guess to hate each other. Good night. You have completed the real sleep program. That wasn't real sleep. Most patients report night of dreamless sleep after only one viewing of this video cassette. No crap! You know why? Because it scared them crapless. Consult your technician if you are experiencing delayed results and or unwanted side effects. No unwanted side effects here. I wasn't paying attention to the last part. For my health. Do not see a doctor. Okay. So, there's one more left to go called Skywatching. However, before Skywatching came out, Matt Pat did a film theory on Local 58. So we're going to watch this next. Theory 58. County spelling be another FNAF episode, they arrive. Emergency alert issued. Fury warning for your area. Don't look away. All will be revealed. <laughs> Safety and theories. Hello, Hello internet. internet. Welcome, Welcome to, to Film Theory. theory. You, are you are now on the fastest available route to enlightenment. enlightenment. Today we're, we're getting right into the news. The, the local, local news. news. That, that is, is more specifically, we're covering the scariest local news broadcast that you've ever seen. seen. None other, other than the creepy internet, internet darling, Local 58. 58. Never, Never heard of it? it? Well, I'm not, I'm not surprised. surprised. It's a so relatively underground series here on YouTube, YouTube that was recommended to me over on Twitter. Twitter. Matt Pat GT, by the way, if you want to follow and offer theories, suggestions. Wow! I'm so, I'm so glad, glad it has shown, shown to me. This, this is the type of horror that really sticks with me. Yeah. Disturbing psychological horror that just creeps under your skin and stays there. It's a series that reminds me a lot of Marvel Hornets, if you're familiar with that one. Seeing a public service announcement outright tell people to do their patriotic duty by offing themselves, and then saying that that message will repeat until there are none left to read it? Even after watching it this many times, I still get goosebumps. The long story short here is that I'm excited to cover this series. One, because we all need a break from Disney's domination over the universe sometimes. And two, and two, this entire series totals 20, 20 minutes, minutes worth of video. video. Not 20, 20 minutes, minutes an episode. 20 minutes total, yeah. 
more like 24 or 25 minutes total. So you could pretty much watch this series now in the same amount of time it would take you to watch a Spongebob episode. So, um, as long as you're not a kid, or if you want to get scared, then, you know, just saying. So, 20 minutes total, and it's available for free, right here, right now on YouTube. So there is no reason why, if you haven't seen it before, you shouldn't catch up with it right now real quick. So you know exactly what I'm talking about as I go through today's theory. In fact, I'm linking to it right here in the top right-hand corner of the screen. So go, check it out, get freaked out, and then come right back, no detours. Otherwise, YouTube will punish me algorithmically. That's not even a joke, it's true. So please go watch it, and come back. Okay, you ready? Well, too late. At first glance, Local 58 appears to be a quirky little local access channel, the type you'd find in any small hometown around the U.S. until you very quickly veer off the tracks, both literally and figuratively. Finding yourself trapped in a world of disturbed dash cams, really aggressive weather alerts, and self-help videos that seem more like a cult's brainwashing manual. And the best part is, it's just getting started. Local 58 looks like it'll have plenty more broadcasts coming to a station or YouTube channel near you. Except there's only one more video. All to tell its horrific story of alien invasion. But what exactly that story is, and where it's headed, is what we're covering today. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after this message from our sponsors. Hang on. In case you haven't seen Local 58's full slate of episodes, even though I did link to it and told you that it's only 20 minutes long, but I get it, sometimes you don't want to do that sort of thing. Sometimes you just want me to tell you everything you need to know for the theory. So here you go. Here's a real brief rundown of the seven episodes they've released in the order that they were published, which doesn't appear to be the order in which the videos are set in, but we're going to get to that. The first video is called You Are On The Fastest Available Route, and is simply some dash cam footage of someone driving through a storm at night. It is super for normal until the GPS system starts telling the driver to go off on abandoned roads and turn off his headlights. Then, in 300 feet, turn off your headlights. We see a flash, whoever is behind the camera runs, and the camera is knocked to the ground Blair Witch style. It's followed by Contingency, which appears to be a government announcement from the 1960s telling viewers that the United States has been defeated by a foreign country. In it, we see a series of instructions about how Americans should off themselves to preserve the dignity of the country, with the ominous phrase that this message will repeat until there are none left to read it. The video ends with the local 58 station making a correction that the message was a hoax. But, um, it's a little late for that one. Let's, uh, hope people weren't too quick on the trigger there. Literally. Video yeah. 3, Weather Service. It starts as an ordinary local weather alert, which is already scary enough because of those really traumatic sirens. But this isn't any snow watch or flood warning that you're used to. This is about a meteorological event that makes it unsafe for people to go outside and look at the sky. There's a correction shortly after that, though, that tells viewers that the event is indeed safe for all to view and that the warning has been lifted, followed by instructions to go outside now. The video goes back and forth on whether we are or aren't safe before we end with a shot of the moon coming into frame and people screaming in the background. Mm -hmm. Scared yet? The fourth video station ID is largely the same, with a few new messages like, Look away, it does not matter. There are other receivers, safety in numbers. It also tells us that the frequency of the channel is 476 megahertz. Judging by me pointing this little detail out, you might rightly assume that this will become important later on. Moving on to a show for children, this one's all about a cartoon skeleton wandering through a graveyard at night, so pretty standard children's programming for 4.15 in the morning. The skeleton lies down in his own grave and dies when the moon passes over him. You might be sensing a pattern here. Video number six is called A Look Back, and it initially appears to be just a recap of programming on the channel before it gets interrupted by more messages that say, we send signals to ourselves through their domain. Did we really believe they wouldn't add their own? And lastly, the most recent video is called Real Sleep, and it's probably the weirdest of the bunch. It initially looks like an instructional video about how to get the best sleep possible, but true to form, things start getting weird when it goes through an exercise that attempts to erase the concept of facial 
facial recognition from the viewer than bombarding them with subliminal messages like, this is your time now, there is work to be done, we are our own gods, you owe the messenger. Yeah, you see why I didn't want you guys to look in the center of the screen for that video? That's why. And that's the channel, my friends. So what on earth does all this mean? Obviously, we got ourselves themes about sleep, the moon, and messages coming from outside of local 58's broadcasts. That makes the conclusion that we're seeing something to have to do with aliens a pretty easy one to deduce, but it also leaves us with three main questions. One, what are those aliens doing through local 58? Two, what do they want? And three, why are they interfering with local broadcast networks when they could very easily just be watching syndicated early 2000s? episodes of Frasier. Let's start first with what we believe the aliens are actually doing, which is hijacking the radio signals through local 58's airwaves. Interestingly, hijacking radio signals for public television is a thing that's happened throughout it history, has. though not by aliens, at least that we know of. One of the most famous examples is the Max Headroom incident from 1987. A local TV station in Chicago was playing an episode of Doctor Who when the transmission was interrupted by a strange rambling figure in a rubber mask of 1980s cartoon personality Max Headroom. This goes on for nearly two minutes, during which time he spouts advertising slogans, references Michael Jackson, and gets spanked by a fly swatter. While the Max Headroom incident wasn't the work of aliens, the FCC never did catch the culprit. And it's an example of how someone can hack into local TV signals even with low-tech equipment. Station ID indicates that the frequency of local 58 is 476 megahertz. And interestingly enough, we have indeed detected unidentified radio signals from space of similar frequency. Radio telescopes in British Columbia have picked up numerous fast radio bursts, or FRBs, from as far as light years away, and at frequencies as low as 400 megahertz, signals that scientists can't really explain the origins of. This kind of mysterious radio burst would lead us to believe that extraterrestrial invaders could use similar frequencies to intercept television broadcasts, and in the local 58 universe, aliens are using those radio waves to send messages directly directly to us viewers, either subversively through programming like a cartoon for children, teaching kids to lay down and look at the moon like the cute cartoon skeleton, and sometimes in much more direct ways, like telling us to just look at the sky in weather service. Yeah, because the aliens are on the moon. This is all confirmed by that brief message in A Look Back. We send signals to ourselves through their domain. Seems to be talking about humans' use of antennas and satellites up in space. The they is presumably some kind of extraterrestrial. Their domain is space. And then the message continues, did we really believe they wouldn't add their own? Calling out that the signals are coming back to Earth having been altered, tampered with by the aliens with their own agenda. In short, there are multiple voices coming at us through the Local 58 broadcasts one come yeah someone's from trying to stop the aliens and one coming from someone else either <clears throat> a scientist or someone working at the station who knows what's going on we see them fighting for control of the screen and weather service first we're told to remain indoors do not look at the sky but is then followed seconds later with the meteorological event is safe for all to view warning has been lifted but that all brings us to question number two what do these aliens want I mean, the goal is clearly for us to look at the moon, as demonstrated by the cartoon and the weather report, but why? In this case, it seems like the series still has some unanswered questions, but we're clearly dealing with some kind of lunar bird box situation, where as soon as you look at the moon, you die, or you go crazy. While the mechanics of the actual moon kill are unclear, it seems like they're exerting an influence by hijacking people's willingness to follow instructions that they hear on the news. It's counting on the fact that we as humans believe what we're told on television and will follow it without question. That's not true, aliens. TV isn't everything. There's no bolder example of this than the instructions that are found in Contingency. This is by far the most chilling video of the series, which appears to play an emergency broadcast segment that was supposed to have been destroyed back in the 1970s. It looks like a message that's related to the Cold War, an era in which nuclear tensions were high. The threat of death from above was more real than it ever had been in America's history, and the anti-communist bloc propaganda was everywhere. In other words, it was a time in which Americans were feeling pressure 
pressured to be patriotic and to fear the dangers that were coming from outside their borders. Contingency looks like it was probably the first transmission that the aliens sent via Local 58, based both on the date by which the message is supposed to be destroyed and in the overall video quality. Now, what happened after that? Since not everybody immediately followed the instructions on the television to off themselves, the aliens then resorted to messaging that they would hope would get people to kill each other rather than themselves and their families. And that's where real sleep comes in. A video that we see is from 1983. While real sleep oh. starts like a normal or at I least forgot. acceptably weird instructional video that seems like it wants to help people have restful sleep, the message is quickly corrupted by the odd inclusion of distorted faces and subliminal messages. Some of them seem like they're encouraging violence, as I mentioned before, whereas others sound like they're against the idea of sleep itself, including sleep is not civilized, the pure of mind do not slumber, and when we sleep, we die. So why exactly would the aliens care about people's ability to recognize faces or sleep quality? I mean, I'm up late writing these scripts a lot of times, but you don't see me running with open arms to my lunar overlords. Unless by lunar overlord you mean Wendy's late night snack menu. No, it's not to make people docile or sleepy, it's to make them hate each other. Psychology studies yeah. show that a failure to subliminally recognize pain in other people's faces and sleep deprivation both lead to a decrease in empathy for other humans. If real sleep is trying to plant messages in people's minds about the work to be done and then also blunts viewers recognition of faces and conditions them to not sleep all of it is pointing to a concerted mind controlling effort that hopes to get humans to kill each other all the videos from messing with gps signals to messing with people's understanding of faces and sleep to children's programming and weather alerts and even to quote unquote governmental warnings all of it is pointing to one concerted goal for the kill aliens all humans. wipe us out by using our signals to trick us into offing ourselves. But why? I mean, yes, we're sending broadcasts through their domain, but that basically just amounts to a cosmic noise complaint. Why jump to kill us all off? Well, think about the initial timing of the alien transmissions. We can't pinpoint exactly when contingency aired, but it's safe to assume that it was in or before 1970, since it says the message is not for use after 11-13-1970. We already talked about the fact that this was during the Cold War, but what I didn't specifically mention about that time the period was that it was race. also the pinnacle of the space race. Like the Cold War, the, the space race Soviet was also Union. a battle between the US and the USSR, but this time it was for cosmic supremacy, or at least lunar supremacy, and it featured the first ever moon landing by the Apollo 11 team in 1969. Now, I'm clearly a theorist, but it seems like Local 58 may be playing off of some of the conspiracy theories that exist around this massive scientific achievement, specifically the theory that the Apollo Apollo 11 crew saw aliens when they were visiting the moon. I mean, it's entirely possible. <clears throat> Some people also say the landing's fake, but I personally believe it's true. As the theory goes, after the lunar module landed with Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin inside, there were a few minutes of silence between them and Mission Control back in Houston. This is just a true fact of what happened that day. But some people claim that in the period of silence, you can hear a discussion between Aldrin and Armstrong on their private medical channels about extraterrestrial objects. As a result, they rush to complete their mission, planting research mirrors on the moon, and then quickly hightail it out of there. Whether these, in my opinion highly unlikely conspiracy theories are true isn't the point here. The point is that the timing works out for this event, the moon landing, to be the basis for Local 58's aliens and their motivation to want to kill us. We've made contact and we've made them mad. And what's not up for debate is that Apollo 11 really did put mirrors on the surface of the moon as part of a way to track the moon's orbit using lasers back on Earth. And it just so happens that a few of the strange messages from Local 58's broadcasts do indeed mention mirrors. Weather Service explicitly uh. warns people to avoid mirrors and later says he found me through the mirror. Moon alien conspirators also believe that the reason the space program ended as quickly as it did and the reason that the Apollo 11 astronauts weren't more celebratory when they returned to Earth was because they saw disturbing, disheartening things up in space and couldn't tell the public. And we know for a fact that someone working at Local 58 knows what's really going on here and is trying to get the message out but just can't, which would seem to line up with that. Regardless, it 
certainly seems that the space program is responsible for the animosity that these aliens have for life on Earth. Maybe the aliens want revenge for being disturbed. Maybe the movie First Man is true, and Neil Armstrong is just really kind of a bummer to hang out with. We just don't have enough of this story right now to know the truth. But we do have one last hint about where the story might go, and that's in the first published video, which also happens to be the most recent from a timeline perspective. You are on the fastest available route. If you look closely for a moment, the video actually shows us one of the extraterrestrial creatures, and the person who encounters it doesn't seem to have survived. So after trying to make mankind destroy itself for decades, maybe the aliens have decided to take matters into their own hands. We'll just have to wait for the next broadcast of Local 58 to be sure. And we are going to watch it. Local 58 TV. Sky watching. <laughs> Twelve AM Sky Watching. Twelve three AM City Council Meeting. Recorded October thirtieth, nineteen ninety one. Two AM Paid Programming. Now I have never seen this before, so Wait, wait, hang on. Guy watching with Hank Hein with Hank Heidemann. Sky watching. T slash W. What's that? Uh, Ryan's belt. Are those not real stars? Image, contrast, brightness. Pleiades. Uh, are the aliens coming down to Earth? moon. His throne? The aliens have a king? What is that? <clears throat> is that the surface of the moon? Yeah, that is the moon.
Rejoice! Thank you guys so much for watching. And on my final note, what the moon? 